So we'll be going over IRS Publication 523, uh, which is Selling Your Home. That's the publication, specifically Worksheet 2, How to Figure Your Gain or Loss. So this is the worksheet that many forms will uh, instruct you, or many tax return situations may instruct you to fill out so that you can calculate the basis or well, the gain or loss of a home that you might have had for uh, primary residence purposes. So we'll briefly kind of highlight the different sections and then we'll go back and work through the numbers. So in part one, we'll determine the sale price, which is everything that we receive for selling the home. In part two, in this part, we'll determine the selling expenses and then we'll from there, we'll determine the amount that was realized. Uh, in, in this section, we'll uh, go over the total basis that you might have invested in your home. Then we'll determine basis adjustments. We'll calculate your adjusted basis. And then from there, once you have the adjusted basis, we can calculate your gain or loss. So at the very top, let's talk about the sale price. So let's imagine you receive $200,000 uh, in the form of a wire for selling your home. Let's imagine that uh, as part of your agreement, the fair market of property or services that you received, if you sold your home and someone threw in, let's say, a used car, not that I've ever seen that in a real estate transaction, but I guess it's possible. You would have to include the amount of, you know, the, the fair market value of that. And then if there were any mortgages uh, that the buyer took over as part of the sale, uh, that if that was a debt that came off of your ledger, then that technically is part of uh, your sale. So if there was like a, say a $25,000 mortgage, you would include that here. If they paid real estate taxes on your behalf, so as part of escrow, um, typically the seller is responsible for real estate taxes paid all the way up until the date of sale. And then the buyer, as part of the escrow calculation, will prepay you know, the real estate taxes you know, from the date of sale through the next assessment date. So uh, if you paid $10,000 for the year and you sell on June 30th, then you would expect to get $5,000 back. However, if, you know, and th that would not be a taxable event, but let's say that your real estate taxes were $10,000 for the year and the buyer paid all of those taxes then you would have to declare uh, the real estate taxes that the buyer paid for you. So, um, and then if you uh, granted an option to buy your home, so if you, you know, had like a rent to own situation, uh, sometimes that, that falls under alternative financing that some people establish and you uh, received money for that person to hold the right to buy your home at, in the future, you would need to include that too. So we'll just we'll just assume that that didn't happen. But you would add up the rest of these items, and we've got fifteen thousand on top of twenty five thousand on top of five thousand, and two hundred two hundred thousand on top of that. So two hundred forty five thousand dollars is the sales price. So. Now, if you received payment for personal property that you sold as part of the home, that's not part of the sales price. You may owe taxes on it, but that is not part of your gain or loss on the sale of a home. Uh, if you receive payment or reimbursement for your employer because of a job transfer, that payment's not part of the selling price. Uh, you'll see it in your Form W-2, and uh, you'll pay taxes on it, but that's not part of your selling price. Uh, if you received a form 1099-S, which is uh, basically the tax form that reports the gross proceeds for a home sale, then you, you would see that amount in box two. 
if box four is checked, then that means there were also cash, non-cash payments that you need to determine the value of and uh, then add them to the figure. So uh, basically, that's what this would be. Um, if you didn't receive a Form 1099-S, then you would go to your real estate transaction documents, your closing documents, to, uh, to get this information. So let's go down and talk about selling expenses. So these are, uh, selling expenses are defined as costs that are directly associated with the sale of your home. So not necessarily costs to fix up your home or make repairs, um, but anything associated with it. So your sales commissions, let's just say you paid $10,000 as part of your commissions, you paid five grand to list it, you paid $5,000 as legal fees. Um, you decided to pay $10,000 towards points. You know, all of that is includable as part of your selling expenses. So when you're negotiating with a buyer and you're making these trade-offs, you can include those concessions as part of your selling expenses. So this ends up being a total of $30,000. And so we'll, we'll take this line 1F, subtract the $30,000, and we get $215,000. So in this situation, if this home qualified under Section 121, which is the, uh, the capital gain exclusion on the sale of your primary home, uh, then automatically you would not have any tax, uh, which is why a lot of a lot of these trans transactions aren't even uh, recorded on a Form 1040 because uh, you have to, you know, Section 121 tax exclusion allows you to exclude any gains of $250,000 uh, and $500,000 for a married couple uh, filing a joint return. So if you only got $215,000, we haven't even gotten to the cost of your home yet. This is just the amount of money that you realize from sell, from selling your home. So now we're going to go into line four and we're going to calculate the total basis. So in part A, we're going to include the amount that you actually purchased the home for. Let's call that $100,000. And then in part B, we'll outline any closing costs. Let's just say there was $5,000 of closing costs and uh, let's say you paid another $5,000 of real estate taxes on behalf of the seller. Uh, and then you, oh, sorry. And then let's shoot. There we go. Uh, my apologies. I'm still working through the kinks of how to use this software. So bear with me. We'll get this. There we go. All right. So in part D, we're going to add any amounts that you spent on construction and improvements that are still part of your home. So I'll take a moment to separate this uh, construction and improvements as opposed to maintenance and repairs. So construction or improvements would be things like um, major systems, like if you installed a new air conditioner, if you um, put in a, a an extra bedroom in your home if you replaced your roof. Uh, you know, those are all things that would be considered improvements. Maintenance and repairs, uh, like painting the house would be considered maintenance and repairs. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, things that are uh, repair oriented, uh, you, you broke a door, you replaced a door, that, that's all maintenance and repairs. 
once you start talking about significant improvements or you're replacing major parts, like if you had to do a overhaul of the electrical system, like that's a little bit beyond maintenance and repairs. So uh, the IRS has a lot of uh, guidance on what would be maintenance related, what would be improvements, um, but let's just suffice it to say the construction improvements would be includable as part of your basis. Your maintenance and repairs uh, might be tax deductible if you use this as either uh, you know, partially for business or if you use this as a rental property, but it, for personal use, uh, uh, it's not. So let's just say that we spent $10,000 because while we own the home, we ended up having to uh, replace the air conditioning system. Um, now, if you actually had to repair damage, uh, so let's just say that we, we, I live in Florida, so let's just say we spent $10,000 on sinkhole remediation. Uh, and then if there were special assessments that were for local improvements, like, I don't know, sewage improvements, uh, then you would enter that amount here. So we'll just say that that wasn't necessary. We're going to take $100,000, 10, so... That looks like it's $130,000, and that's our total basis. So right now, we've got our amount realized, $215,000. Total basis is $130,000. Let's go on to the next page. There we go. All right, now we're going to determine any basis adjustments. So for, for the purpose of this video, this was a personal use only, um, but if you did take any depreciation because you rented it out or you um, used your home for business, then you would enter the depreciation here. Uh, if you took any casualty losses and you claimed them as a deduction on a prior federal tax return, you would enter them here. If you received insurance payments uh, for a loss, you would enter that here. These are all things that you use to lower your basis. Like if you wrote off, if you took a tax benefit because of the decrease in value, or if you got uh, reimbursed for, you know, like if 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 you spent ten thousand dollars to repair the damage on your home, that improves your basis, that increases your basis. But if that ten thousand dollars came from insurance payments, then you shouldn't increase your basis for that because uh, someone else paid for that improvement. So that's a reduction in your basis. Uh, any pay payments that you receive for granting an easement, conservation restriction, or a right of way, um, we'll skip that. If you received energy credits or subsidies uh, that paid you back for improvements, that might you know, let's say you got a tax credit for solar panel installation. Uh, you can't take the tax, you, you can't use that as part of your basis if you received a tax credit for it. Um, any adoption credits that you claimed, uh, any real estate taxes that the seller paid on your behalf. Uh, now, if you bought a house and then they paid your real estate taxes, you've got to include that in here. However, if you reimburse the seller, then, then it's a wash. Uh, any mortgage points that the seller paid, so let's just say the seller paid $10,000 of mortgage points as part of this purchase. So now if, so if you bought your home between January 1st, 1991 and April 3rd of 1994, and you deducted your, the points as home mortgage interest, you would include it here, or if you bought your home anytime after April 3rd, 1994, regardless of whether or not you deducted any of the points. You would also include any canceled or forgiven mortgage debt, any sales tax that you paid on your home and then turned around and claimed as a deduction. So again, you're lowering your basis for all of these tax credits or actual cash money payments that you got. Uh, temporary housing that the builder might have provided you, any gain that you postponed for from a home that you sold before May 7th, 1997, when we used to have rules that allowed you to defer gain as opposed to just 
exclude it. Um, and then now we're going to add the total $20,000 of our adjusted basis. So now we're going to take line 4G and subtract line 5M, and that would be the adjusted basis. So um, that would be $130,000. That was line 4G, and we're going to subtract the $20,000, and we get $110,000. And then we're going to subtract this amount from the total sales price, which I believe was $235,000. So now if this amount is negative, then that means you sold your home at a loss. Uh, you can't deduct the loss, but you don't need to pay any taxes on the money that you received. If the number is positive, then you sold your home at a gain. Uh, you would then need to further determine whether or not you're eligible to exclude that gain, again, under Section 121 or uh, through some other mechanism. And there's a part of IRS Publication 523 that talks about how much is taxable. That's beyond the scope of this video, but I'll click on it just so that you can see it within. Oh. Okay. Uh, so it's on the next page. So how much is taxable, blah, blah, blah. And you can go through that on your own once you've completed this worksheet. So uh, you'll see this video not only in the uh, walkthrough for IRS Form 5405, uh, but it also stands alone for any taxpayer that wants to uh, determine whether or not they owe taxes on their home. Uh, so uh, you can find... Uh, more references to this uh, either on our YouTube uh, channel or you can go to our website where we cover uh, topics like this routinely and uh, simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com you can type in IRS form 5405 or any other tax form and odds are pretty high that we've written an article about it. If you like our uh, articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And if you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them in the comments section. Uh, if there's any topics that you would like me to go over, uh, please let me know again in the comments section. Uh, so thank you very much and have a great day.